You're fired! You idiots! Back to work! Now! Okay? Get back to work! Cut it out! Everything has to be perfect! You make me so angry! Is that what you want? Benson Dunwoody. You know him as the grumpy boss of the park, the gumball curmudgeon himself. I bet you didn't even know what his last name was, because I didn't until I googled it. But that's very fitting, because ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot you don't know about this anthropomorphic gumball machine. Sure, he's one of the main characters of the show. Yeah, he's always got, you know, like a clipboard. These are basic facts. But in this video, I want to dive into the darker side of Benson. Something that you may not have picked up on from watching the show, but is there the entire time, lurking in the shadows. A dark secret, a horrible vice, one that almost cost him his relationships, his friends, and even his life. It's common knowledge that Benson is angry and miserable, just like the rest of us living in 2022. But have you ever stopped to question why? Because there might be an answer you never saw coming. Look, I would argue that regular show does the bare minimum at hiding its more adult themes, which which is why the show is so successful. I mean, it doesn't talk down to his audience. I don't even think it's really made for kids half the time. But the show got so many seasons. I mean, this show got way more seasons than I think anyone ever anticipated. And for good reason. They did a lot with it. They went to space. It was really cool. And I think that if you watch regular show start to finish with the intention of seeing every character's progress, you'll notice a secret arc with Benson's character. One that's a little too blue to say directly, but it's all there. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be talking about Benson and his fight with alcoholism. This isn't even a bit. I know that sounded goofy, but by the time you're done with this video, you will see as we have that Benson is 100% an alcoholic, and this is a problem that followed him throughout the course of the entire series. So without further ado, guys, let me explain why Benson is an alcoholic. Hey, hey, I want to say something. It's clear that Regular Show was one of the more mature cartoons that Cartoon Network's ever made. Whether it was clever innuendos or just literal things that kind of got me in trouble for watching it as a kid. The episode where they see Pops naked, for instance. But it was always funny and it was always great and they never crossed a line. There's a reason why every single blue can in the show is labeled soda, even when it doesn't always seem like they're drinking soda. And I think this is something that started off more in the earlier seasons. And then as the show went on, it kind of became more about the characters. But we all watched that unicorn episode, bro. I mean, you tell me what's going on. And remember that clown in the unicorn? that comes out of the motel come on anyways before i get into all this i want to say i'm not an idiot they're wings in the show they call them wings but literally anybody who's watching this who thinks that they're just chicken wings and nothing more no way is this a metaphor for something else come on bro rewatch those episodes i know you're a little older now bro you probably have a bank account credit score watch those episodes and you tell me what you think regardless though this is something i thought was super interesting and i just want to break it down and i know you may be sitting there right now thinking this guy is an idiot and i am so needless to say, there's a lot that we have to explain before we get down to our main thesis here. And surprisingly, there is a bit of lore we should get out of the way before diving into this. Now, like I said previously, it's no secret that regular show has a lot of adult themes, specifically with, I'm just gonna be blunt here, alcohol and drug use. Mississippi Queen, anybody? Come on, what was that supposed to be? Besides like some crazy drug trip. And that's actually the first episode that I want to open up with. Because any regular show OGs remember the episode Weekend at Benson's. Mordecai and Rigby mistakenly Ao Benson, find out his neighbor probably wants to smash, and give it their all to help Benson impress her. They're real ones for that. This accumulates in a spicy contest that Benson cruises through on account of the fact that he might literally be dead. Whoa! Dude, I thought you had him. He probably needs medical attention. It nearly backfires when Mordecai, Rigby, and a now conscious Benson have to drink the dreaded Mississippi Queen, a concoction of various spicy foods and sauces that trigger quite a reaction in the boys. Instead of cowering in pain like little bitches, they have a full-on LSD trip. It's a pretty wicked hallucination. It's like the desert scene in Beavis and Butthead do America. Have you all seen that? Should we talk about that? Sound off in the comments. That was incredible. For as insane as this was, this would not be a one-off instance of foods or drinks taking the place of drugs and alcohol in regular show. In fact, it was just the beginning. They're like, we can get away with this? Okay, let's pedal to the metal. In fact, this kind of laid the groundwork for a recurring element in seasons 5 through 7. Wing Kingdom. Any regular show fan knows Wing Kingdom. And I'm almost positive just from the logo that this is just supposed to be a riff on Buffalo Wild Wings. The logo, the booth, the wings. What kind of name is that anyways? Buffalo Wild Wings? Sounds like 
something you order off the menu. And then what? We're expected to call it B-dubs? Who called it that? I did. It was pretty much a better name. But wait, no, I'm curious now. How do we get B-dubs? How did that come out from Wings? <laughs> In 1998, the company changed its name, so new abbreviation is needed. B-dubs is the result of abbreviating Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh my god, it's insanely obvious. B-W- oh, I feel like an idiot now. Point is, it still means they knew that Buffalo Wild Wings sounded mid, Wing Kingdom sounds cooler, and they probably haven't taken away everything I've loved off the menu, so yeah, I'm camp Wing Kingdom. Anyways, Wing Kingdom started popping up around Season 3, but it really took off in Season 5, making a lot more appearances, starting with the episode Dodge This. Don't let the simp escalates fool you. This may be packaged as another Mordecai and CJ episode, but the opening scene gives us a look at a different kind of Benson. One who is absolutely white girl wasted. <laughs> This episode shows us from the jump that in regular show, wings will get you certifiably fucked up. It's probably the sauce, and Benson loves to get lost in the sauce, okay? I mean, Skips and Pops ask him to go easy on the wings quite a bit, a sign that he clearly has an issue with moderation, often reasoning with him over concerns of previous injuries or the danger of a, quote, food coma. We can all guess what that would be. Literally sauced up, Benson feels like a complete 180 from the miserable, angry clump of edible latex that contemplates therapy every 9 to 5. If it wasn't for substance abuse, I'd even go as far to say he's the leader that Sober Benson strives to be. And I know that's kind of wild and a little bit of dangerous rhetoric, but look at how he approaches the team once he's feeling a little groovy. Instead of existing in a constant state of irritation and just wanting to get the day over with, he loosens up and becomes completely enthralled in the people around him. He effortlessly leads the conversation as he goes out of his way to hype everyone up, recognizing their improvement improvements and their hard work. I just want to thank everybody for training so hard. You're doing a real good job. He also has a habit of shutting everyone up so he can have the drunken floor, something that happens more than once. Listen up, everybody. Stop talking. Shh. Guys, guys, I'd like to propose a toast. No, let me finish. Shh, shh, shh. Hey, hey, I want to say something. Granted, in this first instance, they are talking about their dodgeball team ahead of a big tournament, but remember, this is Benson, acting completely unbenson-like. Something's up with the wings, is all I'm saying. This is the man with a short fuse who gets frustrated at any inconvenience and detests humiliation on any level. We even witnessed this firsthand later in the episode through his competitive nature and various outbursts. He's taking this dodgeball hobby as seriously as any park job, and we know he takes those a little too seriously. Which is why his attitude here comes as a surprise. Seeing Benson not only perform well under pressure, but psych up the rest of his team so they're all confident ahead of the big game is absolutely wild. Usually screaming at the top of his lungs and threatening everyone's paycheck is how he keeps them in check. But it's obvious that stems from him using his position of power as an outlet for his anger. So I guess it helps that they're playing a game that allows him to go apeshit on people that aren't under his payroll. Side note, I gotta say, Dodge This is kind of an underrated episode. Like the introduction of the dodgeball team establishes that these guys aren't just co-workers, they're friends. Isn't that sweet? It's great team building and they're bonding in a setting where they don't drive each other up the wall. It also makes you realize how absolutely insane the regular show cast is if you had to pitch them to a network, which somebody did. Now don't get me wrong, I think a lot of these characters became characters over time, but like the high five ghost. What is that? What is he? It's the most unconventional thing ever and I love it. Circling back to his leadership skills and initiative under the influence, the episode Men in Uniform sees the whole park hammered after being informed by Mr. Mallard, Pops is Pops, that the park's low attendance will result in being shut down unless they turn it around quick. This leads to a Wing Kingdom to go outing funded by none other than Benson. This last hurrah quickly escalates into Benson jumping the gun and making the misguided assumption that other parks like East Pine are popping off simply because their employees wear uniforms. So with Benson's lead, they spend the whole night making the goofiest fits I've ever seen. Absolutely zero drip, zero out of 10, this is not grailed. I don't know if I use that term right. I only shop at Old Navy. It inadvertently works, but if Benson was sober, stressed out and yelling at them throughout the whole process, he probably would have had little cooperations to design the uniform in the first place, especially for Mordecai and Rigby. They almost seem like they're fragile when they're quote unquote drunk off wings. Raise your voice by just an octave and Rigby's tailing it out of there like his name is Swiper, if you know what I remember that guy. It's really screwed up to see, but it almost seems like Benson's best state of mind comes when he's intoxicated. It's kind of alarming and definitely signs of a greater issue. Like the only way he ever excels at lifting others up, hearing everyone out and well, just being a fun jovial dude 
food to be around is for him to be turned at a chain restaurant, which is not good. It's very dangerous behavior. I do not condone this. Hell, when they thought Muscle Man was going to die, Benson gives a whole speech about Muscle Man's greatest qualities, visibly torn up over the fact that as far as he knows, he's about to say goodbye to one of the only few friends in his life. And then like Muscle Man doesn't die and Benson reasonably gets upset. Let's just cut to that clip. All that death stuff was a metaphor. I leave this world tonight is not a metaphor. Oh, you owe me $12,000. But if there was one trait that carried over from sober Benson to sauced up Benson, it's without a doubt his bluntness. Even when living his best life, channeling summer camp counselor energy, Benson's not afraid to speak his mind. There's no subtlety in Benson conveying that he thinks Mordecai is the best dodgeball player on the team, to the point where everyone else may as well be dog shit at it. When celebrating what could be their last night in the working class, he decides to talk shit about Mallard right in front of Pops. He may be jolly when he's drunk, but he's still very much capable of hurting your feelings without second thought, and I fear him. But alright, you're probably thinking, knowing what kind of quote-unquote drinker he is doesn't mean he has an addiction. These are all common things that happen when you get a little sauced up anyways. Showing your character getting a little lit here and there isn't proof of a problem. <laughs> it's not like he's using these wings as a crutch, right? Well, <laughs> if you think that, Take a seat. There's two episodes I want to focus on that feature Benson largely sober, only for him to immediately resort to chicken wings once things don't go his way. Very subtle. The first, Benson's suit, sees our gumball-headed king in a depression, feeling as if no one respects him, but a fancy suit turns his entire attitude around. Tragically, he bleaches the suit by mistake and copes by drowning his sorrows in wings and a bottle of hot sauce, which I don't know if you've ever had hot sauce, but drinking a surf in the bottle isn't really a fun time. Giving the fit a proper burial while stumbling through his parting words. But then the suit pulls like a Spider-Man 3 and is on him in perfect condition the next morning. Go watch that episode, it's hilarious. The second episode is the Parky Awards, focusing on a show dedicated to celebrating parks from all over the city. I would totally tune into that. It totally sounds like something I'd want to watch. Sponsored by none other than Wing Kingdom. Hmm, never seen alcohol sponsor things before, that's for sure. I'm starting to think that this place makes most of its profits from being an enabler. Benson's pretty eager to receive a Parky Award, knowing he has to have something in the bag, but alas, it's a bust. Benson's rival, Gene, sweeps it like it's nothing. And unfortunately, Benson doesn't have the guts to pull like a Kanye moment. I would have loved to see it though. Gene, I'm really happy for you. I'ma let you finish, but my park is one of the best parks of all time. Benson plays it cool while the wound is fresh, but once the other parks leave, he's no longer humble. Downing some wings and wallowing in his misery. Poor boy. I'm getting some Beth Sanchez vibes from this one. But the silver bullet is really the episode Gold Watch, which I kid you not is just 11 minutes of Benson denying that he has a problem. We start off with our typical sauced Benson, who's hyping up his team and including them in his achievements, but after two pilots, Tango and Stash, offer to celebrate their milestone together, i.e. devouring more quote-unquote wings, Benson suddenly finds himself in an ejector seat stranded in the middle of the desert. I got it under control. This was probably the funniest scene, and there's like a clip of it on YouTube I just watch endlessly because there's something about it cutting to black and him waking up in this specific situation that is infinitely hilarious. We quickly learn that Benson had zero self-control the night prior, unable to resist the allure of bottomless wings, which I'm the same way, honestly. Wings are amazing, but not like this, bro. More wings? Next thing he knew, he was partying hard with Tango, Stash, Mordecai, and Rigby, decided to take one of Tango and Stash's plane for a spin, and more or less landing everyone in a pretty sticky situation. From here, we watch Benson own up to his responsibility and stack up against impossible odds, in an effort to clock in on time, only for the episode to end with him going on another implied bender, this time stranded in the middle of the ocean. What I really want to focus on here, though, is how often the dialogue of this episode leans into the idea that Benson has a problem with substances, specifically implying alcohol. Pops and Skips once again try to reason with him early in the episode. Skips even saying, Well, sometimes people do things they regret on a belly full of wings. Which sounds like it came out straight of a 90s PSA. And is Mark Hamill, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> Benson actively tries to pin his misfortunes on Mordecai and Rigby throughout the episode, but once he actually does it to their face, he's brought back down to reality by Tango and Stash, and what they say to Benson actually made my jaw drop. 
Nobody put those wings inside you but you. Just because we party like handsome maniacs doesn't mean you didn't have a choice. The real messed up part is, Goldwatch isn't the end of Benson's alcoholic endeavors. In fact, it was only the second episode to explore this concept. It goes to show that regardless of the risks, Benson continued to rely on alcohol to let loose and escape the cruelties of the world around him. And I'm not gonna act like this isn't a narrative we haven't seen before, although not in a Cartoon Network show. I mean, characters drinking as a coping mechanism that's practically ingrained in American culture. Though he can go overboard in his reactions and punishments towards Mordecai and Rigby, anyone would be under a ton of stress just having to manage this park with, with all the crazy shit that goes on daily. Seriously, regardless of their intentions, Mordecai, Rigby, and even Muscle Man attract horrors beyond any human comprehension to their job on a literal daily basis. Dealing with your employees slacking off is already annoying enough, but when a demigorgon raids your fridge and burns your crops, and that just becomes another Tuesday on the job, you're probably gonna acquire a thirst for something. Only a cold miner would drink. That's not even factoring his repressed childhood trauma, failed love life, and all around bad luck, and sad life. I mean, look at this man's apartment. Why do they have windows on the inside? Why? It's like a liminal space. It freaks me out. Obviously, Benson needs a therapist, not the grocery list of a Hot Ones episode. But luckily, before piecing out, and this is what I really want to make the video about, the show managed to sneak in a little sobriety arc for Benson in the final two seasons. And the catalyst to his recovery is a little something I'd like to call love. So remember how season 7 introduced the whole giant dome over the park thing that turned out to be a part of a greater plan to send parks around the world to space and then season 8 was regular show in space and there was evil pops and explosions and pops died and I definitely wasn't crying no you're crying stop it I'm not crying stop dude don't even look at me right now I'm not crying remember all that yeah well towards the end of season 7 we received the episode Pam I am golden title in the episode Benson properly becomes acquainted with his love interest Pam one of the dome scientists who's at the park to conduct research Research. Within seconds, it becomes abundantly clear that these two are a match made in heaven. Pam completes Benson. It was written in the stars, pun intended, and they even have matching clipboards, which if anybody carries around a clipboard, find your other half, bro. Like, that's a telltale sign. Someone who could, dare I say, make Benson happy. Someone to serve as a soothing thought when he's at his limit. Someone who understands him and knows what it's like managing a team. It's the bright light that Benson had always been waiting for. Someone who can stop him from picking up a wing just by popping into his head. That's love, baby. And look, don't place your happiness onto one person. Ultimately, self-improvement has to come from within, but it never hurts for someone to give you the push you need to improve. And that's what it seemed like Pam was to Benson, if you're like me and you're analyzing a children's show for its alcoholic undertones. But regardless, Benson holds a lunch date with Pam to spend time with her, bringing his favorite dish, <laughs> you guessed it, the wings. Uh-oh. Yeah, they're having a great time and getting all tipsy, free as a bird, pun intended again, until the giant fan in the ceiling decides it's time to fly high, almost killing both both of them until the plot armor kicks in, thank god. It's funny because Close Enough would go on to use the rotating blades of death five years later and they can actually show alcohol on that show so it's already better. This near death experience drew out a heart to heart between these two lovers and a committed relationship bloomed from there, though they would become long distance once the park was sent into space for obvious reasons. I actually look at this mission in space as the characters forcing themselves to confront and overcome their deepest flaws and insecurities, coming back to earth stronger than ever before. It was a great way to wrap up the series, and Benson embodied all of that. At the start of season 8, he was struggling in his adjustment to space, like literally anybody, and he tries to go back to Earth only to end up in a simulator, which alongside a video message from his friends gives him the change of heart he needs to tough it out for the long haul. Also in space, you don't have to pay for gas, and gas is expensive, and that makes me mad and is stupid. But then he gets dumped. <laughs> Yeah, I laughed, I'm sorry. Yeah, in the episode Fry's Night, long distance kinda gets to Pam real bad, and this is pretty much as long of a distance as physically possible, and she decides to do his best for both of them and break things off, and as you would expect, Benson immediately turns and tries to cope with wings. But the wings don't work anymore, because now they just remind him of his lunch date with her. This is dark, bro. Benson ends up getting paired with a talking rock that's absolutely down bad for him because it's regular show, like she very much wants whatever equivalent of a gumball. And the whole experience leads him to be vulnerable with himself as he realizes he can't just jump into another relationship and he can't live his life bathing himself in wings. This leaves Benson in a different spot than he's ever been before in the series. Letting go of the shield of anger he hides behind, we're left with a Benson who's sober and ready to embrace whatever the future throws at him. The decision pays off as the end of the series sees Benson return to Earth, obtaining his happily ever after, after all. He reunites with Pam, they get back together, and eventually they get hitched. Starting a whole family, which I don't even want to add 
ask genetically how that would work. I won't. I mean, a gumball machine and a human being having kids, kinda nasty, defies God. But it goes to show at the end of the day, love can conquer anything. Look, when I first thought of the idea for this video, it was basically, wow. Benson gets drunk in the show, it's pretty obvious. And the more I followed the thread, the crazier it led. And while at the end of the day, obviously none of this is meant to be alcohol, and it is clearly stated as wings, I dare you to watch all of these clips and tell me what you think. Because I've literally never drank wings before, but Benson has in the show, and there's a clip of it. But what I was left with when I followed this whole arc is, they did something really responsible and actually really interesting with this. What started off as like a one-off joke is, we can make Benson seem drunk and the adults will get it, turned into an arc where a character is forced to deal with his substance abuse issues, face them down the barrel, and become a better person regardless, and in spite of it. And this all goes back to the fact that this is why regular show worked. Every time there was like a little innuendo or something that like you can't show that to kids but kids won't get it so it's fine you got to remember that that's the huge reason why i personally loved regular show as a kid and why so many people love it and still watch it to this day it doesn't talk down to you it's not stupid it's smart even when it's stupid and it takes its mature themes and approaches them honestly maturely when it has to like the whole case of this arc benson's such a weird character i don't know why i like him every time i look at him a little closely i'm like what am i even watching but he's one of the most iconic characters in cartoons i would argue especially with regular show only becoming bigger and more prominent after this the show ended. So I think it's safe to say if the, any of this is interesting to you, you can go back and watch all these episodes and take your own takeaway from it. But honestly, looking back, it's one of the coolest parts of the show to me and proves that regular show has so much rewatchability. That being said, guys, I would love to know what you guys think about all of this. I know it's kind of crazy, but it's kind of not. So let's know in those comments down below or tweet to us on social media. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Nemo. This is a regular show video and I'll see you next time. Peace.